Good evening. Welcome to worship. Good to have you all here tonight. And a very warm and sincere welcome to our guests and visitors. Please know you're welcome at St. John's anytime. And if you'd like to know more about our church and the Word of God that we teach, please be sure to get a hold of us. All our information is on the back side of the worship folder. Today we're also going to be emphasizing the Rock Youth Center, which is only a few blocks away. We have Matt Schultz, who is the director with us. He'll give a brief talk at the end of the service. Also, he's going to help us with the liturgy as he's going to sing with us. He has a beautiful voice, and, and uh, we appreciate his being here. He's also going to be here tomorrow for Bible class and the conducting of Bible class. This is the worship service that goes out on the Internet, on TV, and also the radio. So we want to welcome those worshipers. Also thank those that work so hard to make sure this worship service gets out there and everywhere. For those who are going to be listening on the radio, I'm Pastor Timothy Miller. I'm conducting the worship service. Our preacher is Pastor Nick Quinnett, and our organist is Mrs. Becky Fisher. The theme, the overall theme for our services is increase our faith, Lord. Increase our faith. And we extend that theme tonight as we have increase our faith, Lord, faith demonstrated through persistent prayer. Take what you learn from God's Word into your life and apply it, and also talk about it with others, encourage each other with God's Word. Let's open our worship today. We're going to be using, of course, the big screens, but also if you'd like to use a hymnal, it would be mostly the blue hymnal. So we're going to sing our opening hymn, hymn number 803, Day by Day.
Please stand. The order of worship that we will be using this evening is the service setting two. If you're using a hymnal, a blue hymnal, it's found in the front on page 172. We'll be abbreviating the service somewhat, and we'll let you know when that happens. The glory be to God in the highest will be omitted. We begin, oh, as always, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Holy God, gracious Father, I am sinful by nature and have sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I deserve your punishment both now and forever. But Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sins with his innocent suffering and death. Trusting in him, I pray, God have mercy on me, a sinner. Our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent his only Son, Jesus Christ, gave his life as an atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. God, our refuge and strength, have mercy on your church as we come in prayer before you. Answer us not in judgment on our sins, but in peace and forgiveness. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our first reading is taken from Genesis chapter 32, and it begins with verse 22. Here we see how Jacob is praying as he is wrestling with God. He got up that night and took his two wives, his two maids, and his eleven sons, and crossed over the ford of the Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream, and he also sent his possessions across. Jacob was left alone, and he wrestled with the man there until daybreak. When the man saw that he could not defeat him, he touched the socket of his thigh, and the socket of Jacob's thigh was dislocated as he wrestled. The man said, Let me go. It is daybreak. Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Then he said to him, What is your name? He said, Jacob. Then he said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have fought with God and with men and you have won. Jacob asked him, please tell me your name. 
He said, why do you ask what my name is? Then he blessed him there. Jacob named the place Peniel because he said, I have seen God face to face and my life has been spared. The word of the Lord. Our second reading is taken from 1 John chapter 5, beginning with verse 13. This serves as the sermon text. I have written these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. This is the confidence that we have before him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we also know that we receive the things we have asked from him. The word of the Lord. Please stand for the gospel acclamation and the gospel. And the gospel acclamation, the refrain, the alleluias will be sung by our soloist, Matt Schultz. And I'll be speaking the verse of the day. on him because he cares for you. The Holy Gospel is written in the Gospel of St. Luke, the 18th chapter, beginning with verse 1. The section as with the other, talks to us about persistent prayer. It also reminds us to pray according to God's will. Jesus told them a parable about the need to always pray and not lose heart. There was a judge in a certain town who did not fear God and did not care about God, about people. There was a widow in that town, and she kept going to him, saying, Give me justice from my adversary. For some time he refused, but after a while he said to himself, Even though I do not fear God or care about people, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will give her justice so that she will not wear me out with her endless pleading. The Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says. Will not God give justice to his chosen ones who are crying out to him day and night? Will he put off helping them? I tell you that he will give them justice quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. We invite you to fill out one of those white attendance guest cards that are in front of you in the pew rack. And then you can return them to us after the sermon as the offering baskets go around. Just put it in one of those baskets. This gives us the opportunity to serve you better, get to know our guests, and also encourage others in their Christian worship life. Those online can, of course, fill out the form using the link that is provided or the QR code or call in the office. We continue our worship as we sing the next hymn, the hymn of the day, which is hymn number 723, When in the Hour of Utmost Need.
grace, mercy, and peace are yours through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, think for a moment some things that you might do each day. I'm sure all of us have a routine that we go through when we get up in the morning. Maybe you wake up, you immediately go take a shower, you get dressed, make yourself some coffee and breakfast, brush your teeth, and, well, maybe you go off to work. It's a routine, something that you might do every day. And when you come back home, you might have another routine too. Whether it's right when you get home or before bed, there's certain things you make sure you do every single day. And throughout your day at work, you probably have other routines there also. As you're taking a moment to think through what you, do through what you do throughout the day, take a moment to stop and think of how much time do you spend during the day in prayer? Do you make time for prayer? Maybe you have those typical times of prayer. Maybe you pray when you get up in the morning, you pray before your meals, and you pray before you go to bed. But how often throughout the day do you spend time in prayer? prayer. I think it's safe to say that for many of us, our prayer life is probably lacking in a few areas. But why? When you think about it, prayer is probably one of the easiest things we can do. It doesn't take much time out of our day. We can even include it in amongst other things that we're doing. We can pray while we are driving the car. We can pray while we are waiting in line somewhere, maybe even at work when we have a second or at lunch as things are on our mind. Send a quick prayer up to God. Yet, so often we neglect to do it. But why? Maybe one reason why prayer gets lost in the busyness of the day is that, well, we only think we need to pray when, well, we feel like it or we really need it. We save it for those big events throughout our life that come up, those trials, those struggles, those hard times, which is, is good to pray during those times. God tells us to come to him in the day of trouble. He wants us to pray for those, in those times, but maybe we just regulate, put prayer back to when those hard times come. And so often, maybe when those hard times come, we come to prayer with not the right motivation behind it. We come to God demanding things from him because we feel like there's been some injustice done to us in some way, and, and God needs to make it right. And we fail to follow up that with prayer, with a prayer of thanksgiving, thanking God for all the blessings and all the prayers he's answered and everything that he has done for you and me. Or perhaps another way, reason why we don't make prayer a continual part of our daily life is that Maybe we think we're bugging God in some way. We think we might be annoying coming to him over and over again with the struggle that we've been having in our life and saying, well, I don't want to bother him about this anymore. Or perhaps, maybe you feel like when you pray, all you're doing is leaving a message on God's holy answering machine and you're just hoping that God might be able to hear your prayer. You don't enter prayer with confidence knowing that he does in fact hear it. You see, prayer is something that, it's not something that we learn once and, well, then we know how to do it for the rest of the time and it's over and done with. It's not like riding a bike. No, prayer is, and learning how to pray consists of a lifetime of persistence and struggle as we have this sinful nature that likes to regulate it to the background, that likes to break our confidence in it, break our confidence in God and trusting that he truly does hear it. And you see, so many of those issues that I brought up, many of those excuses that we have that, uh, for reasons why we don't go to pray can maybe be summed up in perhaps a lack of confidence. A lack of confidence in approaching God. Maybe some of them might be overly confident where we come with the wrong motivation and demanding things that we have no right to demand. But so often it might be that we are timid, afraid to come to God. And according to our sinful nature, that would be true. We would have no right at all to come to God and request anything from him. As we realize we come to God, the almighty, perfect God, who is imperfect in every single way, we sinners would be coming to him. If we were left on our own, we realize, yeah, we don't have that right. But the fact of the matter is, you and I aren't left on our own on this earth. We're not left on our own in approaching God in any way. We have Christ with us. 
You see, in verse 12, that's in the section right before what we have for our sermon text for today, in 13, it says this. The one who has the Son has life. The one who does not have the Son does not have life. I have written these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. You see, all of you who have faith in Jesus Christ, what does this say? You have life in Christ. That shows up three times in this section. And don't just look over the word and say, okay, yeah, we hear this all the time. We have life in Christ. That we, we know that. Stop in f- for a moment and realize what that means for you and for your prayer life. If you have life here on this earth, what this is talking about, eternal life, well, that means if you get to go to God forever and be with him in heaven. And the only way you get to that point, the only way you have life means that your sins have been washed away in Christ, that you are perfect because Christ's perfection has been put on each and every single one of you. Yes, if we were left on our own, there's no way we could approach God. We had to be, be approaching God with fear and trembling, but here with Christ, as he's washed away our sins, as he is our mediator, that bridge between us and God, we can approach God in prayer in confidence. That's because our status before God allows us to be confident to come to him. You see, in this section of scripture, the word for confidence that is confident that's used in Greek is one that means confidence in intimidating circumstances. And this would be intimidating if it were not for Christ. Every prayer would be intimidating if it were not for Christ. With Christ in this situation that we should be intimidated about, we realize we don't have to. We can go with confidence because God is willing and hopeful that we pray to him and wants us to pray to him and willing to listen because you have life in Christ. Now what does this confidence give us? We see in this section it says this, we know that he hears us. You can be confident that God does hear each and every one of your prayers as believers. God doesn't hear the prayers of unbelievers. It's only through believer, only believers that God hears because it's through Christ, that life that you have, that God hears them. And he's never too busy to listen. You see, when we pray, we don't have to worry that God is like some help desk or some help number that you might call for some customer service that you call and, well, they put you on hold, that music's playing in the background, it comes back and say, well, you're number 10, now you're number 9 in line, you have an hour long to wait with these updates. No, God hears you right away. Right as you pray, God is hearing your prayers and he's happy that you're coming to him in prayer. Because he's our almighty Father in heaven who cares for us, who wants to listen to what we have to say, who wants us to come to him. You see, he's not like parents who are here on this earth who, well, parents here want to hear what their, their children want to say, but there can be times where, well, they just get busy. Things get in the way. Maybe they're in a conversation with someone else. Maybe they're working. They have to turn to the child and say, hey, I want to hear what you have to say, but not right now. I'm too busy with other things. God is never too busy to hear your prayer. He's always willing and able to listen to all your prayers all the time. Your prayers never fall on deaf ears. And then if he's always willing to hear our prayers, it means he's always willing to answer them. This is an area where some people might struggle with a little bit, don't they? They might say, well, I prayed to God, but he didn't answer my prayer, and why do I need to keep going to God in prayer? Perhaps you've said those words in one way or another to yourself, where you're saying, God, why aren't you answering me? I'm asking you. To say that God didn't answer a prayer could not be further from the truth. We see in this section, it says here, whatever we ask, we also know that we receive the things we have asked from him. You see, God always answers our prayer. But we need to get this in the right context. God answers our prayer in the way that fits his will. Verse 14 says, according to his will. You see, prayer isn't cheap. What I mean by that is prayer isn't something that God intends to, for us to go and come to him with our list of demands and that he's going to give us whatever we want in prayer. 
Can you imagine what this world would be like if God said yes to every single prayer that came to him? It would be chaos. But so often people bring prayers to God that, well, aren't going to benefit them, aren't going to benefit other people. Maybe they, they're wishing ill on other people. God were to just say, blindly say, yeah, I'm going to say yes to all this. Well, the world would tear itself apart. Or God answers prayers in a way that he wants to, according to his will. In a way that would benefit you and me, that's good for our physical, but mostly our spiritual welfare, because his goal is to get us home to heaven to be with him. That means God will answer our prayer, not, in all way, not always in the ways that we want, but he answers them in the ways that we need. So he does this in three ways. God can answer prayer by, well, of course, saying yes. And perhaps there have been times in your life that you've prayed to God, and it seems like almost instantly, just like that, God answers that prayer and gives you exactly what you were asking for. What a great and wonderful blessing that is, and God sometimes reveals to us how he answers those prayers, and we can rejoice in that. But maybe sometimes God will say yes and never revealed to us that he did answer our prayer in just the way we wanted, just doesn't let us see it. Other times God might answer our prayer by saying, yes, but not right now. For God knows how to answer prayer in the right time, right when we need it. It might be days, weeks, months, decades, years ahead, but he answers prayer in its own time. I'm sure many of the Jews for such a long time were praying that God would send a Savior, this promised Savior to them, yet God waited until the time was right to send him, answering their prayers when it was best fitting. And then there's the third way that God can answer prayer. One that, well, maybe we don't always want to hear, but one that we can rejoice in just as much as when God says yes to our prayer. God can answer our prayers by saying no. Saying no because maybe what we're asking for isn't for our good, our best interest, because God knows what's best for us. He has the whole picture in mind, not just our little tunnel vision that we get stuck in. No, he will say no to us, and we can rejoice knowing that the fact that he said no means he cares for us. He loves us and seeks to have us to be in heaven with him someday. Perhaps one of the more famous examples from the Bible where God says no is to the Apostle Paul. Where the Apostle Paul is going to God, asking God to relieve this thorn in his flesh that God has allowed to come to him. And what does God say? He says, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Paul there himself says that this is something that kept him humble. That's something that keeps him going to God, relying on God for his strength, for his hope to get through that trouble that he is going through. Therefore, when God says no to you, we can also rejoice because it's in line with God's will. You see, prayer is not meant for us to impose our will on God, but it's meant for us to ask God to fulfill his will, to do his will in our lives, to make our lives better, especially spiritually, and to give thanks to God for all the blessings and everything he's given for you and me. Because God knows what's best for his children. We don't always know. Our almighty God in heaven does. So you might ask, well, what's the point in prayer? If God's going to give us what we need in the first place, why do we have to come to God in prayer? Isn't just, this just a big waste of time? Well, there's a number of reasons why we want to go to God in prayer. You could say number one is, by going to God in prayer, we show that we trust in him. By going to him, it's a form of praising him, glorifying his name, showing that we can't do this on our own, that we need to def depend on him for everything, that he gives us everything. Another reason we pray is to give him thanks. To give him thanks for everything that he's done for us in our lives and how he's taken care of us, how he's blessed us with immeasurable blessings here. And the third, perhaps is the most important of all, that God tells us to do that. He wants us to pray. He tells us to come to him in prayer because he wants to answer those prayers. He wants to bless us. 
The book of James there, it says that prayer is powerful and effective. That means that God truly does answer our prayers and blesses us through them. So we see this is why we pray. To give God praise, to give God thanks, and because God wants us to come to him. Yet, the question might be, okay, God wants me to pray, but what do I pray for? How do I pray? The disciples themselves had this question for Jesus, and Jesus answered them. He answered them by giving the best prayer ever, the perfect prayer that there has ever been because it's from God himself, the Lord's Prayer, one that we pray here every single Sunday, one that is meant to be an example for us in our prayer. You see, as we go through our daily lives, we, we can pray to God. It can be really quick prayer. It doesn't have to be the entire Lord's Prayer that we say, okay, now i got to pray the Lord's Prayer and just do it from rote memory and not listen to or really mean what we're praying. We can use the Lord's Prayer as an example for things to pray for. Perhaps you have fallen on hard times financially. You can go to God in prayer and say, well, give me my daily bread, Lord. Help me to see through this. Help me to get through this. I know you're going to bless me in this way. Or perhaps there's a trial going through your life or temptation coming to you that's afflicting you. You know, one of the petitions of the Lord's Prayer says, deliver us from evil. Lead us not into temptation. As you're going through that trouble, a quick prayer of, Lord, help me get through this temptation. Help me get through this trial. Go up to God. You see, prayer isn't something that's difficult. It's very easy. We can do it throughout the entire day. Whenever something's on our mind, we can go to God and ask God for help. Ask for God's blessing and go to him and thank him for all the blessings that we have. See, because he is always listening for you and eager to hear what you have to say. See, God talks to us through his word, through scripture here. And to complete that conversation, God wants us to come to him in prayer. So be persistent in prayer. Make it part of your daily life every day, not just in the morning or at night before you eat, but throughout the day as things come to your mind, go to God in prayer. He is listening and he will answer those prayers in the best way possible. God is there at the ready, listening and ready to answer your prayers so that he can bless you. Amen. Please rise. We continue with confessing our faith using the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, we'll collect our offerings of praise and thanksgiving for our Lord and Savior. Please also place those white attendance cards in the offering baskets as they are passed. We love because God first loved us. We continue with the offering hymn, hymn number 721, What a Friend We Have in Jesus.
As we go to our Lord in prayer, we keep in our prayers the families of the following. The Lord took Harold Dittman, as we know him, Penny, home to heaven on October 10th. The funeral is tomorrow at 4 o'clock, and visitation is before that from 1 to 4 here at church. Bruce Caston was called home to heaven, and the funeral arrangements are pending. Edward Deals was called home to heaven, and the arrangements are also pending. And we also continue to keep the family of Mr. Omet, who was taken home to heaven, and his funeral was today. We rejoice with Harley and Arlene Frenzel as they celebrate their 68th wedding anniversary, and Greg and Melody Schultz as they celebrate their 40th wedding anniversary. And then we also keep in our prayers Darren and Jenna Warnicke, who were married here at St. John's on Friday. We go to our Lord in prayer. Dear Father, so often we are slow to come to you in prayer. It comes from a lack of trust, confidence, our own pride, and misplaced priorities. Forgive us for this and help us to see that since we have life in you, you eagerly await our prayers to you. Give us the confidence to know that you do hear each prayer and answer them in the way that is best for us. Help us to grow in faith that we come to you in prayer more often. Gracious Lord, we thank you that in your fatherly love you gave Harold or Penny Dittman, Bruce Caston, Ed Deals, and Ernie Omet your merciful guidance and constant blessing in body and soul throughout their lives. Let your holy word and eternal promises comfort all who grieve. Strengthen them with the assurance that in all things you are at work in truth and love. Teach us all to number our days. Help us seek the things that are above, that we may at last appear before your presence in peace and joy. Gracious God, who has ordained marriage for our good and has blessed it to this day, 68 years ago you saw fit to join Harley and Arlene Frenzel, and 40 years ago, Greg and Melody Schultz. We thank you for so richly blessing the marriages of Harley and Arlene and Greg and Melody. You have kept them in sickness and in health and provided for their livelihood. Above all, you have blessed them with saving faith in Jesus as their Savior and Lord. Continue to adorn their lives with godliness, happiness, and contentment. We commend them together with ourselves to your gracious mercy and loving care for time and eternity. Gracious Lord, in the beginning you created man and woman and established marriage by your design and wisdom. Look with favor on Darren and Jenna Warnicke who promised themselves to each other in marriage. Guide them with your word that with genuine faithfulness and unwavering love for one another, they may honor and keep the promises they have made. This we all ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Please stand. We continue with the liturgy for the sacrament of Holy Communion. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give Him thanks and praise. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who promised that wherever two or three come together in His name, there He is with them, to shepherd his flock until he comes again in glory. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song.
we pray. Lord God, you are worthy to receive thanks and praise from all people. You created the world and all who live in it, and in your mercy you saved us. We give thanks to you for the grace of your Son, Jesus Christ. Though in very nature God, he took the nature of a servant and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. He offered himself as a sacrifice for sin and redeemed us from its curse and penalty. He rescued us from the terrors of death and restored eternal life with you. He conquered our enemies and gained for us the kingdom of grace and glory. Bless us as we receive your Son's body and blood and lead us to remember his suffering, death, and resurrection. Forgive our sins and fill us with the hope of new life in heaven. Hear our praise and receive our thanks as we worship you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Together we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please be seated for a short announcement. As we celebrate the Lord's Supper and members of our church and church body come to Holy Communion, approach up the middle aisle and return by the side aisle. When indicated, kneel or remain standing at the rail. Receive the wafer with an open hand and take the wine cup yourself from the tray. If you prefer to be handed the wine cup, simply hold out your hand. Hold your wafer hand up like stop if you want a gluten-free wafer available in a sleeve on the tray. Non-alcoholic white wine is also available in the middle of the cup tray, and cup receptacles are along the walls. The common wine cup or chalice is provided as a choice. Those not members are asked to talk to a pastor first before taking Holy Communion. The general blessing will be given at the end. Come now. All things are ready.
Please stand. The true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you to life everlasting. Go in peace. Amen. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, we give you thanks, O Lord, for the foretaste of the heavenly banquet you have given us in this sacrament. Through this gift you have fed our faith, nourished our hope, and strengthened our love. By your Spirit, help us to live as your holy people until that day when you will receive us as your guests at the wedding supper of the Lamb, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Please be seated. We close our worship as we sing hymn number 724, verses 1 and 4. Be still my soul before the Lord. I'm going to ask Matt to come up right away. You can uh, talk before the few announcements that I have and right here at the lectern, I'll turn it on for you. And Matt Schultz is the director of our Rock Youth Center. Many of you know that I was there for a good number of years and always interested to find out how things are going. So there you go, Matt. Thanks very much. Good evening. As you said, my name is Matt Schultz. If any of you don't know who I am, um, I'm blessed to be, get to be the, the director of the Rock Youth Center. Um, just a couple of blocks behind you here. Um, the Rock is a very special place. Going on 20 years ago now almost, um, the Wells Churches in town got together and decided that it would be a really good idea um, to start a ministry um, to target the teens of our community to tell them about Jesus. Um, they realized that was a segment of the population um, that could use some evangelism and also could use a, a good, safe place um, to get together and have fun and stay out of trouble and get good advice and guidance. And um, The Rock is what... Um, came from those blessings. Um, it's a very special place. If you haven't been to The Rock before, I would really encourage you to come down and visit sometime. Even if you have been to The Rock before, um, I would encourage you to come down and visit sometime. Um, it looks a little bit different right now. We got some new carpeting and we painted, um, and it, it looks pretty nice. So I would I would definitely encourage you to come down and and visit sometime. You're more than welcome to visit anytime when we're open, or if you'd like to visit sometime when we're not open, um, get a hold of me and I would be happy to meet you there anytime. Um, I, I love 
when people come to visit any time of the week, any time of the day, I would be happy to show you around and talk about um, what we get to do at the Rock. Um, as I said, the Rock is a very special place. Um, the, the passage on the screen right now is a very fitting one for tonight. Um, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Um, that's a very uh, important passage um, as far as what we do at The Rock. Um, teenagers nowadays, I think, have more anxiety than any teenagers I know of in, in the history of our country. Um, and to get to tell them about Jesus and give them some comfort um, when there isn't a lot of comfort anywhere else, that's a pretty special thing. Um, but the only way we get to do that is with support from people like you. As I said, we, the, the rock was started by the four Wells congregations in town, and the only reason we get to keep going is because of people just like you. Um, there's, there's different ways that you can support the rock. Obviously, you can support the rock with your treasures. Um, there's a free will offering today for the rock, and that's a way you can help. You can donate um, money to help keep the rock going, and that's a wonderful thing. Um, not everybody can do that. And there's other ways you can support the rock as well. Um, you can support the rock with your talents. Everybody has some kind of a talent. Not everybody admits that, but everybody has some kind of a talent. Um, whether it be, maybe you're good at playing games, maybe you're good at some sort of projects or some sort of art, maybe you're good at baking cookies or brownies. Um, cookies and brownies are definitely a big hit down at The Rock, and if we have some good treats down there, that helps get people in the door, and then we get to tell them about Jesus. That's a really simple way that you can help support what we do at The Rock. Anybody can do that. That's a wonderful thing. You can bring a meal down if you want. There are kids in town here that come to The Rock to get food who sometimes don't otherwise have any food that day. So to bring a meal down is a, is a really wonderful thing. And you can bring a meal down and just drop it off, or you can come down and sit and eat with the kids, that's even better. Um, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing to get to sit down with them and have a little conversation with them. And maybe you can tell them about your church and what you're doing at your church and maybe invite them to come. Um, there's, a, there's some rock kids here tonight. Um, Anthony up front here, many of you may know, he became a member not too long ago um, thanks to visiting the rock. He visited the Rock a long time ago when Pastor Miller was there, and he ended up going through instruction class and being baptized and confirmed, and now he's a member of your church here. He's a perfect example of the, what Jesus can do just by planting the seed at a place like the Rock. That's a very special thing. We're very proud of Anthony. That's a wonderful thing, but there's lots of other teens who we could encourage in that direction. So if you see me come here sometime with a group of kids, please say hi um, and smile at them, wave, just be nice to them. That can, just a, a, a simple smile can go a long way towards making them feel comfortable coming to church. Some, a lot of the kids that come to The Rock are not used to coming to church. And so that can be kind of a scary thing for somebody that isn't comfortable in church. But just looking over and giving them a smile or a wave, that can go a long way towards making them feel more comfortable. That's a way you can help. Um, you, can, you can help also by giving of your time. Um, we are always, always looking for volunteers to come down and help at The Rock. And volunteering doesn't have to be a difficult or scary thing. Sometimes it's as simple as sitting at the table in the kitchen and just hanging out. Um, 99 times out of 100, somebody will come up to you and start a conversation. I think you'd be surprised at how simple it really can be 
um, to just come in and start talking to a kid. Odds are they'll probably have some questions for you. I'm sure you'd probably have some questions for them. And a lot of them can be really easy to talk to. And building relationships like that go a long way, again, towards um, successes like Anthony, towards getting them to come to church. If they come to church and they see somebody across the aisle that they recognize and they're comfortable with, that can go a long way towards getting them to come back again. And that's a wonderful way that you can help. That would be a huge blessing. Thank you to all of you who support The Rock in whatever way it is that you're able to support The Rock. Um, like I said, it's, it's been almost 20 years that The Rock has, has been working on this ministry with Jesus' help. And that's very, very much because of the support of people like you. So thank you, thank you, thank you to all of you who have Jesus in your heart and who give of your time and your talents and your treasures um, so that we can share the ultimate treasure that Jesus died to take the sins away of the teens we get to serve. That message is gold. Thank you, thank you so much for helping us share it. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. And uh, it uh, certainly touches my heart that we have someone over there whose heart is really into the work. Uh, your heart definitely comes out as you uh, share uh, information about the rock. And you covered everything that I wanted to mention as far as the door offering and also that you brought some teens along. And so um, I won't go into any more of that. Uh, just God bless your work. Uh, and um, may God move us to be involved in that. Take a look at the bulletin. I'm not going to have any more announcements. Uh, please be sure to read it through. Ladies, there are a number of events that you don't want to miss. Check them out. God be with you all, and have a good week, everybody.